Well, to absolutely nobody's surprise, another mass shooting took place in America. This time at the Covenant School in Nashville, Tennessee, by a former student who murdered a total of six people, three of them being children. Just horrific. Now, the weapons used to carry out this massacre were purchased legally. The attack was premeditated. The shooter had a manifesto and all and was ultimately shot and killed by police at the scene. Now, as desensitized as we all are to mass shootings, given how regularly they occur in this country, it is never, ever easy to learn about the needless slaughter of children, ever. I will never grow numb to that. This doesn't change the fact that we're all exhausted from having the same conversation that we always have whenever there's a new mass shooting. Reasonable people will point out the need for gun regulations, the right will predictably obfuscate about the role that guns play while offering thoughts and prayers, and absolutely nobody expects anything from Congress. And the same cycle repeats as soon as the next mass shooting starts, once we kind of move on from the last one. It's just really tiring. And even Republican lawmakers seem exhausted. And they're not even pretending anymore. For example, Representative Tim Burchett admitted that his party has absolutely no plans to fix this issue. So it's, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And we're not going to fix it. Criminals are going to be criminals. And my daddy fought in the Second World War, fought in the Pacific, fought the Japanese. And he told me, he said, buddy, he said, if somebody wants to take you out and doesn't mind losing their life, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do about it. His response reads like a satirical Onion article. No way to prevent this, says only nation where this regularly happens. Yeah. Now, just for fun, let's juxtapose his stance on drag queens with mass shootings and see if there's any differences we can spot. We don't put up with that, that, that crap in Tennessee, and we should. We're not going to fix it. Criminals are going to be criminals. See, when it comes to gun violence, unfortunately, there's just nothing that we can do. But drag queens, however, well, Dagnabbit, we're not going to put up with that. We have to do something about that. See, I need every single person who's watching this video to understand that these mass shootings are a policy choice. They are a policy choice. And the right has given up the pretense that they care even a little bit. They're done trying to placate us. They refuse to even support solutions that they've proposed previously. For example, remember how they used to try to blame mental health instead of guns, but then the overwhelming majority of Republicans in Congress voted against funding for mental health services in schools? I, for one, remember that. Remember how they used to blame violent video games all the time? Well, nobody buys that excuse anymore either since video games are no longer some niche hobby for nerds in their parents' basements. We all play them. So those excuses they no longer fool the masses. So when all of your excuses and scapegoats go out the window, what do you do? Well, that's easy. You find a new one. There's an endless supply of things to blame besides guns, right? And this time, it's trans people. In fact, all trans people, because that's who the right's trying to blame instead of guns. For example, the Rupert Murdoch-owned New York Post reported transgender killer targets Christian school. I wonder what message they're trying to send here. And Fox News also didn't miss the opportunity to call this an attack on faith and accuse the left of defending the murderer, believe it or not, while shoehorning in trans acceptance as part of the reason why the shooter was motivated to commit mass murder. And of course, you know, since the trans killer reportedly resented the Christian school, maybe it's just a matter of time before another Christian hating trans person targets more innocent people. They're not even trying to be subtle. Now, I just want to first point out how ironic it is that the right is claiming that the left is defending a mass shooter, considering that the right wing's response to the Club Q shooting was basically, well, I mean, they were asking for it. That was just a couple of months ago. We all remember it. In fact, let's look back at a couple of tweets from Tim Pool specifically. Quote, we shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Club Q had a grooming event. He also wrote, people keep calling for wood chippers, and this is what happens. In other words, it's their fault. They had it coming. Fuck around and find out, right, Tim? He falsely accused them of being pedophiles to justify their murders. And now, the same people who rationalized mass murder of queer people is turning around and accusing the left of defending a mass shooter. It doesn't get any more ironic than that. That's what you guys do. 
Now, second of all, why is the shooter's identity suddenly relevant to the right? There are literally hundreds of mass shootings every single year in America by cis straight white men, and they never bring up the shooter's identity. But when a trans person does it, all of a sudden, it's relevant. The question is, why? Why is the identity of mass shooters suddenly relevant? Well, it's because the right is obviously trying to exploit this tragedy in order to make you think that all trans people are dangerous. For example, Twitter user CatTurd pointed out these shootings that were supposedly done by trans people. Be afraid. Be very afraid is the message here. Matt Walsh used this tragedy to make a broader point about all trans people as well, saying, I came to the conclusion years ago that the trans movement is the greatest evil our country faces. I only become more and more sure of this fact with each passing day and more and more determined to oppose it until my last breath. Even the chief twit himself, Elon Musk, responded with an exclamation point to a post from right-wing propagandist Benny Johnson, who argued the modern trans movement is radicalizing activists into terrorists. The quartering responded to Benny Johnson saying 0.5% of the population is committing nearly 100% of mass shootings lately. So the message is very clear. They want you to be afraid of trans people and think that all trans people are violent based on this. But if we're looking at the identities of mass shooters, well, Socked on Left put together this graph of high lethality mass shootings between 2018 and 2023. And as you can see, cis white men carry out the overwhelming majority of mass shootings. However, for some reason, the right isn't trying to demonize all cis white men. But if identity suddenly matters so much to right wingers, why not point that out? Why not ask how cis white men in America are getting radicalized into committing all of these mass shootings given that they occur so frequently. We know why they're not asking this question. Now, regardless of the shooter's identity, the underlying solution does not change. It's the guns. We need gun regulations, period, end of story. We don't need to pretend as if it's violent movies or violent video games or a lack of prayer in schools or a lack of good guys with guns to stop the bad guys with guns. It's the guns. Let's stop entertaining the right's disingenuous excuses. It's obfuscation, nothing more than that. But the reason why the right is hyper-focused on the identity of the shooter only in this instance is because they're trying to exploit this tragedy to justify further violence against all trans people. It's a strategy right out of the Nazis playbook. And I want to get to some responses from people on Twitter who eloquently pointed this out. Policy analyst Daryl Owens says the parallels between the Nazis and their sympathizer media fanatically focusing on Jews who were 0.75 percent of the population leading up to the Holocaust and the U.S. right focusing on trans people who are 0.5 percent of the population are genuinely terrifying. He's absolutely correct. And as Vosh points out, thousands and thousands of mass shootings from cis people pass without incident a small handful from trans people and we get this they will kill you if they get the chance do not let your guard down and he is absolutely correct about that this is not hyperbole hunter avalon writes conservatives only like seven black people are killed every year by police what's the big deal also conservatives over the last six years four shootings were carried out by people who weren't cis this is a massive problem that needs to be addressed exactly the hypocrisy is so brazen also lance from the surface points out after the charleston shooting where nine black americans were slaughtered by a white supremacist fox news immediately spun the narrative that it wasn't a hate crime but an attack on christianity now the nashville shooting is both an attack on christianity and was trans ideology of course and last but certainly not least hassan piker points out over the last five years 2,840 plus mass shootings have occurred in the U.S. Three of those shooters have been trans. Guns are the number one killer of children between the ages of 1 and 18, and the right are salivating over a school shooter being trans to deflect away from the main issue, ease of access to weapons. Exactly. He is exactly correct. So we see through you, right-wingers. We know exactly what you're doing here, and it's despicable. No, we're not going to let you derail the conversation as you always do whenever there's a mass shooting. If you truly cared about the lives of innocent people and children, you'd advocate for one thing and one thing only, gun regulations. But since you never do that, shut the fuck up. You don't need to feign concern over dead children when we know you don't give a shit. Spare us the theatrics. You never cared about dead children. Now, a Harvard University professor named Juliette Kyman explained how identity of the suspect doesn't suddenly change the fact 
that the lowest common denominator, unsurprisingly, is guns in all of these mass shootings. Each of these cases is always going to have a particular difference, right? Whether it's uh, uh, someone is angry at their father or someone had something happen at the school. And this is a unique case, and we have to be sensitive about it to the extent that Audrey Hale identified as a woman we do not see mass shooters uh, who are female, especially in particular school shooting uh, murderers. Those, that is, that is, uh, uh, this is actually, I think, the first time that I can remember. I know I was on air yesterday st stating the same. And so that uniqueness is obviously going to go to only one part of this, right? Each of these school shootings has motive and means. Motive goes to the particular person, what's their mental health uh, uh, situation, what happened at the school, why did they choose that target? Uh, as Andrew was saying, what clues did they leave behind? What was their community seeing? And then the means. And then that's when you get the connectivity, right? That's when you start to see these are all starting to look the same, right? I sort of think now, like, we don't own guns in this country. Guns own us at this stage. And this is where we have to now focus on an important part of, of an agenda, which includes mental health, protecting our kids, fortifying schools, but also the connectivity, which is a certain kind of gun. I, I you know, look, pronouns, pronouns do not kill children, right? People with guns kill children, and it's going to be a distraction in our coverage and keep us from what we now know, which is each of these cases has a similarity uh, more than any difference. That is exactly correct. To try to disaggregate guns from gun violence feels like gaslighting, and that's because it is. And the right has been doing this to us forever. But to then shoehorn in anti-trans hysteria into the conversation as well, it just makes their concern trolling feel so much more vile this time. They are truly morally bankrupt individuals, and the fact that anyone in this country takes them seriously is genuinely astonishing to me. But I want to recenter the conversation on the actual issue, which is gun violence and guns. And I want to leave you with this poignant speech by freshman Congressman Maxwell Frost, who calls out the corrupt cowards bought off by the gun industry, who are the ones who are perpetuating this problem by refusing to take action. Mr. Speaker, I rise today because I am furious. Angry that three kids died today in Nashville, Tennessee. Angry that hundreds of parents had to cry their eyes out today, not knowing if their child would come home from school. And angry that we have to live day after day when we turn on the news to see rampant gun violence claiming life after life. And all of this is because politicians in this chamber that have been bought and paid for by the NRA, that put profits over people, over human lives, Cowards who wasted our time last week, passing a parental bill of rights, not giving a damn about the rights of children to be able to go to their classroom without the fear of being gunned down due to senseless gun violence. It is likely that at this moment, the next mass shooter is planning their shooting. What will this chamber do about it? I filed my last bill last week to simply create a federal office of gun violence prevention. Three kids are dead today. And every day that we wait, a hundred more people die. I pray to God that there are some Republicans in this chamber that can help support my legislation to save lives. I yield back my time.